My wife had an emotional affair last year and I'm having a hard time getting her to do repair work. TL Dr. My 40 my 40 f had an extensive text phone relationship EA with a guy mid-40s M she met via hobby from April November 2023 which she ended after I gave her an ultimatum. In the six months following, we've barely made any progress. She has been resistant to starting repair work, and I don't know how to get her to take some initiative on fixing the relationship. My wife and I have been married a dozen years, engaged a couple years before that and have known each other since high school. We have no kids. We get along quite well. We have fun together, and rarely really argue. We had a pretty good time isolating during the pandemic. It was hard because of everything going on in the world, but we didn't fight with each other or anything and got to spend a lot of quality time together. Our lives have gotten busy again after everyone forgot about COVID, but I didn't really think we had drifted extremely far apart or had other major issues. Around Memorial Day last year, I noted that my wife was being real cagey with her phone in ways that aren't normal, and I saw some texts with some guy out of the corner of my eye for days on end, and so I confronted her about it. My words were something along the lines of I'm not sure but I think you're having an inappropriate relationship with some guy. She admitted that something screwy was going on, without details, but denied anything physical, and was generally defensive about the whole thing. This confrontation prompted her to air a series of grievances about our relationship including things from as far back as our wedding day. She also was insistent that she didn't want to have intercourse with the guy but she did want to have emotionally intimate relationships with other people, because I am apparently not sufficiently meeting her needs here. She basically was describing an emotional affair, which at the time I didn't understand. She also made it clear that she didn't want to totally cut off contact with this guy. You have taken so much from me, I'm not letting you take this etc. Lots of Darvo stuff in retrospect. I told her that I was fine with her having a platonic normal friendship with guys including this one if she thought she could keep it professional. I'd obviously have preferred if she stopped talking to the guy but I was trying to be reasonable after encountering pushback. It was a rough convo, but we eventually settled down without anyone leaving the house or threatening divorce. I wish I hadn't agreed to her maintaining her relationship in retrospect, but I was in a pretty bad place and couldn't really think straight. The following weeks were up and down as more things trickled out. We had some good fun together we always do and have paid more attention to each other. We've had more intercourse than we have in a long time, and it was good I continued to be paranoid about her communications with AP, often to an extremely distracting degree. I really was trying to outcompete AP for her attention. No I didn't know about the pick-me dance at the time. I confronted her twice more about AP, once when I was possibly imagining things, and once after I discovered, in July that she was spending hours on the phone per week and sending hundreds thousands of texts to him still after our original conversation about reining the relationship in. She was talking at work, while in the car, driving around while talking so I wouldn't hear, etc. WS denied doing anything wrong, but I'm not sure how she wouldn't think this would bother me. Plus she didn't tell me about it, and barely mentioned her AP at all, so she was being obviously deceptive. Any other platonic friendship she would have mentioned just in the course of talking about our days and she wouldn't have to hide it from me. She again told me in no uncertain terms that she didn't intend to end her friendship with AP, and that it's still not intimate. I decided that it really can't continue in a way that doesn't make me extremely uncomfortable, and wasn't really taking that as an answer anymore. Both of us in tears, she sent a text breaking up with him and showed me. I wrote her a sappy letter the next day thanking her, since I knew it was hard for her to do. And then she started talking to him again after a couple of weeks. At first I noticed her using her phone a lot again and saw AP usually first in her recent texts. I honestly gaslit myself about this. I thought we must have just agreed for her to a break and not on a totally ended relationship. She wasn't really hiding that she was talking to him again, but she never talked to me about it. I just noticed one day, we entered couples therapy in mid-August, after I insisted repeatedly. It was stressful to get her to go, since she really didn't want to and generally seemed irritated by it. It was kinda non-productive for a while because we were just talking about non-affair things, and as you'll see this therapist didn't end up working out in the end. I couldn't really say what I wanted to say, because never felt safe, and WS kinda dominated everything for a while. At one point the therapist was so into WS's story that she suggested an open marriage to get her intimacy needs met, which was absolutely not helpful. Most times I've brought up the affair in session or out I feel like I get Darvod back or met with other hostility. It's already hard to feel safe enough to bring this up, and it's even harder when I feel attacked for it. In November when I finally tried to open up during couples therapy, 
W.S. responded again by explaining again how she wanted to have intimate relationships with others, how I hadn't met her needs, and how I should actually be thankful for her relationship with AP because it was getting me laid more. She also said that if therapist and I keep referring to what she did as an affair, then she might as well have ducked the guy. That's when I decided that I had had enough it was him or me. I sent a long email to our couple's therapist explaining a lot of what happened that I hadn't said, and told her that I needed W.S.'s relationship with AP to end and that I'd be confronting her about it at our next session. I did. It was very high stress, but she begrudgingly agreed to end the relationship before our next couple's session. The therapist ended up breaking up with in early December after W.S. told her that she didn't feel safe in our therapy sessions, one week after I told W.S. that she had to cut it out if she wanted to stay together. I was shocked, but honestly the therapist wasn't a great fit. She let us flood each other constantly instead of helping us be regulated. It was a damaging experience, and set progress back months. Regardless, I firmly believe that she had an affair and that we need to deal with the betrayal like we would any other affair. She seems to prefer to move on. Yes I know this is a common dynamic. Now, months later, I'm fairly sure the affair is over. But we are making painfully slow progress. There is no urgency from WS's end about repairing any of this from what I can tell. It's not surprising, considering how poorly the therapy went previously but it took me a lot of effort and pushing through deflection to get her to see a therapist again together, which just started in early March. This new therapist is already quite apparently better, but there's still lots of work to do. Since our failed therapy sessions last fall I've learned a lot about myself and processed my feelings with journaling and my own therapist. I've since read a few books not just friends, The Courage to Stay, How to Help Your Spouse Heal from Your Affair, The Betrayal Bind, among others about infidelity which helped immensely. I'm way past ready to go down the repair path or at least come to some kind of resolution but I don't know how to bring WS along without feeling like I'm dragging her along. I had to really break down in tears to finally elicit an apology text saying she'd do anything to fix our relationship, but since then she has only rarely actually demonstrated remorse. I bought both How to Help Your Spouse Heal from Your Affair and The Courage to Stay in hard copy. She read How to Help. A couple weeks ago, which I do consider to be progress and demonstration of remorse. She was quite upset by it afterwards, though. It's hard, I can't deny that and there's definitely some stuff in the book that I disagree with. But now we're stuck again, as she hasn't done anything since then to move forward. As far as I know she hasn't read the other book and now I'm in a position where I have to nag her about it again. It feels like if I'm not visibly in distress or otherwise pushing her she won't be motivated to do anything. But I don't want her to be visibly in distress, and I want her to try to repair things because she wants to. My biggest burning question really is how do I get her to engage with me in a productive way, so that we can try to figure out if we can make this work or decide that it's over? Minimizing the damage, and putting off dealing with it, is eating me up inside. I need her to take the initiative here, so that I don't have to spend all of my energy trying to get her to take each small step forward. How do I get her to do that and get it to stick? Other background she had a screwy relationship in the mid-2010s with some no longer mutual friend of ours that I would retroactively call an affair intercourse eating, makeouts, etc. but I am assured they did not have intercourse. She also was sending an ex some kind of suggestive shit on Instagram disappearing messages early last year and I caught her, which is why I was on alert for wonky phone use a few months later. We never really dealt with either of these past events, just moved on and tried to forget. I'm not inclined to make that mistake again. Added I still want to try to fix this. I love my wife, and things are not 100% negative here. At this point I think she wants to repair the relationship but doesn't have the instincts knowledge to know what to do, and is afraid anxious about doing it. I don't want to handhold her through her learning process her, but I want to set some sort of boundary that makes it clear that I need her to do something, or at least makes it obvious that she's unwilling to do so at which point I will enforce the boundary. I genuinely want to give her a chance with some guidance expectations that I don't think I've successfully communicated. Yes I would hope she would just instinctively do the right thing, but since she's not I want to at least give her some guard rails before throwing in the towel. So, based on your edit, it would appear that she is a serial cheater who continues to engage in inappropriate relationships with others throughout your marriage and, she shows absolutely no remorse and takes no accountability for the damage her actions have caused to your marriage. The problem is, you cannot carry the load for reconciliation, she has to. She broke it, so she has to put the work in to fix it. She has to own the choices she made, seek to understand why she made them, and be willing to do whatever is necessary to repair the damage she has caused. She literally has done none of that she still won't even admit having an affair, let alone multiple times. Honestly, you cannot make her respect you or your marriage. 
She has to want to move forward together. After all of this, I'd quit making everything be about her and start spending your energy on you meet with an attorney, not to file, but to get an idea of what your options would be. Start Grey Rock with her. Start putting the energy you put into this situation into a new hobby, the gym, anything. Maybe if she sees you are willing to move forward without her, she will understand what she is risking, but I doubt it.